God alone. Is it, is it because, is it because Satan is powerful? No, it is not because Satan is powerful. It's because God's attention is upon his children. Jesus Christ said, of all that you have given to me, I have not lost none. That all that Jesus, my father gave to me in the last day, you will receive eternal life and they will not be lost. Talking about those that the father has given to him. He's not talking about the rest of the world. In John chapter 17, he says, I pray not for the world, but for those that the father has given to me. Are you following? God has focused his attention to his children, not make believers, not mix multitudes, not fund seekers, not those who have come into the midst of the church of God to spy out their liberty. Not those who come with all kinds of powers, demonic powers, false powers, using the name of Jesus to deceive many. Judgment time is coming, but not the last judgment. Weeding and sifting times are here. That was why I have always said, since the corona something, are you ready? Have you made it right with your Lord? Do you really have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ? Are you ready for the trumpet? I've been saying this, maybe you may be tired of hearing it from me, but I speak from my heart and my spirit. I've never been one given to making belief impressing people, being fancy. I know when the elders in the redeemed Christian Church of God were pushing me forward, go stand with, with Jehovah said when we are going on something, they, they sit behind me and talk to me, go, go, go. I will not go. But there are people who are jumping to walk by his side, to be the one he will talk to if you want to say something. I'm not that kind of a person. I stay where the Lord keeps me because he knows the end product. He knows that at the end, what he wants to accomplish. Children of men can jostle and hustle and do all kinds of things to occupy positions, to be popular, to be healed by the voices of children of men like themselves. There is a friend of mine who always said, ah, you Pentecostals, look at what you do. Look at this pastor, how he's taking people for a ride. Look at this person, it's only money they are interested in. Look at this person, you call you people, Holy Spirit filled people, but because are you speaking tongues? Look at that pastor, he has been caught in adultery. They will say all kinds of things. I will say to them, the church of God has no problem whatsoever. The church of God has never had any problem. The Bible made it very clear that the foundation of truth, or the church is the foundation of truth. No child of God will do the things that you people are accusing the church of being. Those people who do those things are people who infiltrated the church, who are charlatans and uh, uh, children of men, who have seized the megaphone and make so much noise that you think they are children of God. If you are in the spirit and led by the spirit, you will know the church of God. 
and not this people that you're referring to. He said, but then they say they're Pentecostal, they're speaking tongues, they're spiritual. I said, that's what you just made it clear that they said, God has not said. What you see there, he said, but they are deceiving the people. You see how many thousands of people who they, they deceive. I say, <laughs> you think you are right, but you're not right. You're not deceiving anybody. That was why I say you may not agree with what I'm saying. Those charlatans have not deceived a single child of God. If you are deceived, it's because you're not a child of God. Yet, you may still be, but not yet. For if it were possible, even the elect of God will be deceived. That's what the Bible says. What you see happening out there is what we call in Nigeria, monkey go market, two monkey go market. Two monkey go market. The people who are deceiving and the people who are being deceived are in the same camp. They are not children of God. They are using the name of Jesus Christ to do business. The people who are being deceived, they are being deceived because they are not seeking Christ. They are seeking something they can get from Christ or but through the name of Christ. That is why they can be sold the fake gospel. But the Bible says that it is the Holy Ghost in your heart that bears witness with you that you are a child of God. Do you have that witness? Are you ready? I was in a meeting last night. I had to go there physically for the first time since the COVID to minister in person. I usually minister by Zoom, but these people don't cannot with Zoom thing like this. So I had to go there. And I spoke to them about readiness, about the opportunity that we have to prepare for what God is about to do. To begin to recognize, take notice of those passages in the Bible that we flip through and don't pay attention to them because they don't agree with the business as usual. With what people with the megaphone are saying. They don't care to compare that what they are saying is in congruence with the gospel of Jesus Christ. That their actions are in concert with what is expected of the church as demonstrate, demonstrated in the acts of apostles. You know, the actions of the art of apostles and the way church is conducted, the way they meet, does not agree with the 21st century fancy entertainment culture. Brethren, the question is, what do you want? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We thank God for these times. I did not know about the death of Pastor Joshua until during the prayers and comments here in this service, I heard it. As I told you, I was somewhere yesterday. I had to minister there. And when I came home, it was very late and I, I just barely crawled into bed. So I, I didn't have time to look at this or look at that. And this morning, the same thing, I was preparing and doing all kinds of things until Pastor Sonny mentioned it during the opening prayers, pre-service prayers. And uh, Pastor Fumi mentioned it again during the family time. That is when I heard it. I didn't hear, I didn't hear about it. 
I restrained myself from reaction because I know strange things will happen and they are beginning to happen in the church of Jesus Christ. At this time, we're not concluding anything. But mark my word, I've been saying it before and I'm still saying it. Changing of the gods is happening. Don't be shocked when things happen because Jesus Christ is coming soon and he's preparing the church for his imminent return. That was why he warned us before the coronavirus something and asked us, are you ready? I can't stop mentioning that because the things that happened that weekend the, from the night vigil of February to the night vigil of March, a lot of things happen. I mentioned a few things. I don't know if you record them. I don't know if you listen to them. I don't know if you note them, noted them down, but open your ears. When I speak, listen to me and go and pray about it to see if I'm telling the truth. Because trust me, I will not promote fanciness or try to present it in a fancy way, you know, forget about that, that's not from me. At a service like this, it's an opportunity to meet with God. Like in the day of Job. The Bible says they came when the sons of God or the children of God came to gather at his feet. Every Sunday you have that opportunity to gather at the Lord's feet as Mary did. Are you listening? And what are your motives? What are your interests at this gathering? Where I went to minister last night, they had a worship team that is, oh, mind blowing, very nice. There are very few. It's a very small church, but they have a, they, they have a good pianist. Their drama is, oh, very good. And they have uh, a guitarist, then two ladies singing. Five of them worship too, but they are very, very good. But it's a very serious church. Conservative in doctrines, but call it modern in worship, which is a good combination. But one thing you must realize about Day Spring Church, if you go back to our, our, our brochure, you will notice where it is written. That's one of the cardinal, cardinal goals of Day Spring Church is to prepare a people for the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. to prepare a people. We are not only to disseminate the gospel by preaching the gospel, but to prepare a people for the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. That is our goal. That is one of the goals, cardinal goals of Day Spring Church. So these times that we are in, that is unfolding, is the season for this spring church to be made manifest, not in popularity, not in fanciness, but in quiet, dignified preparation. So that our ministry we have um, how do I call it? A focus. 
Many churches don't have focus. They just go and do the same thing, praise, worship, and dance, and this, and then uh, uh, in other times, they do a, a seminar for this and seminar. Just keep people busy, churning them all, people actively making, doing things and all that. And they are happy doing it. What is the focus? Is it evangelism? The truth is that many of us have failed in the area of evangelism. That is why other religions are encroaching and suppressing because they are growing in numbers more than the Christians are growing. And the Christians that are supposed to be growing haven't been taught the fundamental things of the, the Bible and how a Christian truly should live or be identified. The Holy Spirit we proclaim is by name. At the night vigil, we mentioned a few things that the Holy Spirit does. And we say, examine yourself and see if those things have been done in your life. How many places in the Bible did the Lord say, examine yourself? Nobody will examine you. The word of God is there for a standard. And the witness of the Holy Spirit is her confirmation. Because those who are truly saved have been sealed with the Holy Spirit. Sealed with the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. I think I should stop there. But I'm calling us to self-examination. Which ties with what we're about to discuss, and I will make it as quickly and short as possible. I'm praying for that grace, because as one God has given the gift of revelation, gift of light, gift of truth, may I say it again, holiness. So they are all one, gift of revelation and gift of light illumination, spiritual light that brings out the truth and dissolve the mysteries. It's not something you boast of because you know it is not of you, but by the special grace of God who has granted that grace that you might be a mouthpiece to those who will listen. Not a mouthpiece to the world, but to the body. Praise the Lord. We are talking briefly, let me just say briefly. We are talking briefly now to the issue of sanctification. So sanctification is very important if you're going to make rapture. Our Bible reading is taken from 2 Thessalonians chapter two. 2 Thessalonians chapter two. Please read. Second Thessalonians chapter two. Now we beseech you brethren by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him that ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter as from us as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalted himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he has God seated in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Remember ye not that, when I was yet with you, I told you these things, and now ye know what withholded, that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now let it will let, until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him, Whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders, 
and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they received not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion, that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord, because God had from the beginning chosen you to salvation through a sanctification of the spirit and belief of the truth. Whereunto he called you by our gospel to the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the traditions which ye have been taught, whether by word or by episode. Now our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God, even our Father, which had loved us and had given us everlasting consolation and good hope through grace, comfort our hearts and establish you in every good word and work. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Our Bible our memory verse today is taken from 2 Thessalonians 2.13. 2 Thessalonians 2.13. 2 Thessalonians 2.13. But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through a sanctification of the spirit and belief of the truth. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Sanctification is the action of making or declaring something holy. Sanctification. The action and process of making or declaring something holy. This action or process includes or involves being freed from sin or being purified. It is to set apart to a sacred purpose or to religious use. To consecrate is to free from sin, to set apart, to purify. I'm just trying to define sanctification so that we will know. And people will say sanctification is, a, is, is an ongoing thing that you do all through your life as a Christian. Our memory verse says, but we are bound to give thanks always to God for you Brethren, beloved of the Lord, because God had from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the spirit and belief of the truth. Through sanctification of the spirit and belief of the truth. When God chose you for salvation, at salvation, at the foundation of the world. He sanctified you. The process of sanctification involves setting apart for sacred use. Removal of sin through purification. And freedom from sin, it involves making you sinless. That's why when God saves you at salvation, your sins are forgiven. Your sins are not being forgiven. They are forgiven. 
You are not being sancti sanctified. You are sanctified by God. There are some things that we should look at the scripture very closely and see the wording of the scripture and stand by what the scripture says, not make the scriptures fit into what we are thinking. You are sanctified by God's choice the day he called you to salvation. The day you accepted that call because your salvation package includes sanctification. If you are making excuses for sin, oh, uh, nobody is perfect. Uh, sanctification is a life time something. Is that what the scripture is telling us here? If you are not sanctified by God, you cannot be a saved soul. Because salvation is a gift from God. He saved you from the foundation of the world. He has equipped and enabled you by including sanctification. Because if you are not saved by God, then you are not an elect of God. Neither are you set apart by God or chosen by God. Because sanctification in itself, in definition, means setting apart for a purpose. And in this case, sacred purpose by God, religious purpose in worship and service. Therefore, sanctification is part of the believer's life. True believer. True believer. And I don't apologize for that because of the things in the world today, people who call themselves believers. So you don't know who, when you say believer, you include everybody, even charlatans, mixed multitude. We see that in the Old Testament, we have them as mixed multitude. Praise the Lord. Sanctification. As we said, it's an action of making or declaring something holy. And we know that it is God that calls one to sanctification. It is not your effort. Because sanctification begins from inside. When God is involved in something, he gives you a package that is complete. Because if the package is not complete, you cannot do your own part as part of the covenant relationship with God. It is God that calls one to sanctification. The Bible says in 2 Thessalonians 2.13, but we are bound to give thanks, that's our, our memory verse, always to God for you we are bound, we have to, because we know it is done deal. It is done in your life. We are bound to give thanks, always to God for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord, because God had from the beginning chosen you to salvation through what? Sanctification. He chose you. Remember what it says in John chapter 15, verse 16. You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. God chose you when you knew not God. To salvation through sanctification. What is the sanctification there? Setting you apart, separating you from the world, separating you from the children of men, making you his son. And I use this son for both male and female. So don't feel excluded if I, do, if I don't use the word daughter. 
son is a spirit, not in gender definition in human flesh. Son of God is a spirit. And the Bible said, for this purpose was the son of God manifested. And people always limit that to Christ. No, it is not limited to Christ in the flesh, but the spirit of Christ. So whether you are a male or female, when you have the spirit of Christ, you are son. Just like in Genesis, when God, the Bible said God created them male and female and called them what? Adam, not Adam and Eve, but he made them male and female and called them what? Adam. So also, when we talk about the son of God, we're talking about the spirit of Jesus Christ that covers both male and female. Because male and female is in the flesh, in the body of the flesh, not in the spirit. Okay, maybe I, those things make me use more time. But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord, because God had from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the spirit and belief of the truth. And in 1 Thessalonians 4, 3, 1 Thessalonians 4, 3, say, it is written, it is written there, for this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that you should abstain from fornication. The will of God for you is your sanctification. It is the will of God that you be set apart for him. And when you, you see it is added here that you should abstain from fornication. What is fornication here? Okay, I keep asking those questions and that makes me extend uh, the message. When we think of fornication, we think of sexual immorality, which is what it is. Sexual immorality is so bad because it corrupts and defies the spirit. It's one of the sins that are very, very devious. It corrupts the spirit. It defies the spirit. And in sanctification, you are not allowed to indulge in that which defies the spirit. You can't even think of any other sin that defies the spirit as much as fornication. Because it is in your spirit that you can be one with the Holy Ghost. The Bible warned in first uh, 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 Corinthians chapter 6 about you joining yourself to a harlot. It defies your spirit because you become one with that harlot. That's what, why fornication, adultery, and like things are very, very bad for you. You can't join yourself with a harlot and then join yourself with the Holy Spirit. Very defiling. And in sanctification, we say abstain from fornication. You can go, as you go down reading that uh, John chapter, uh, sorry, not John, First Thessalonians chapter four. As you go down, you will see all the aspects of what we are warned against. As we can glean from our memory verse, the process of sanctification involves God action and your response. We know that the Bible tells us and teaches us that God is a covenant keeping God who will not force his will on you 
or against your will. He will not impose on you. God is not a taskmaster who will do anything against your will. Even when he calls you, if you don't take the call, he respects your decision. When you receive the call, a covenant is established because he made an offer which you have received. And it established a relationship that can be consummated through your personal relationship with him. You are blessed when you are called at the foundation of the world. It is a favor and a loving gesture that cannot be surpassed. Even before you were, done, you were born, you were already chosen of God. That is why the passage here says, we cannot cease to thank the Lord on your behalf. Because we're happy for you. You were already chosen before you knew that there's need to be chosen or there's need to be saved. The favor has been done you. All you need to do is to say, yes, Lord, obedience. I receive it with gratitude. The gift of God is eternal life. When God called you and gave you this gift, there is nothing you have done to merit it or to deserve it. Why he chose you and not the other person, we don't know. Why he chose me and not another person, I don't know. I don't even want to know. I am right now rejoicing in the fact that I was chosen in my ignorance and everything. But he chose you. And with that choice of salvation, call to salvation is sanctification. Sanctification been given to you. And it's, as you receive salvation, the spirit of God, Christ for salvation, you also receive the spirit of sanctification or the state of sanctification to enable you manifest sonship, to set you apart as a sacred vessel for the use of the creator almighty who created this earth and heaven for his pleasure. Only he knows why he created heaven and earth. You don't. But then he placed you on earth here called you as the elect of God with the power enabling you for sanctification and having done all that, sealed you so that you cannot fall away from it by the gift of the Holy Spirit. We will not explain to you why he says, be ye holy, for I am holy. It's not in your power to be holy or not to be holy. You have been given the power, but you can reject it by your own actions and by your own refusal. When you accept it, it is fueled. It is fired off. That is why the Holy Spirit is with you. To make it real, to manifest it. But if you don't have the correct teaching and understanding, you will never exercise that which he has put in you because you will think it's beyond you and out of reach. But that's not the case. The Lord will never ask you to do something he has not equipped you to do. He will never ask you to do the impossible because that is not his character. 
Praise the Lord. As we can glean from our memory verse, the process of sanctification involves God's action and your response. We know that the Bible tells us that God is a covenant-keeping God who will not force his will on you or against your will. Therefore, God's call here is a call to, number one, salvation, number two, a call to sanctification, and number three, a call to service because you are a sacred vessel. That is where the service comes in, and that is why the Holy Spirit is in you, because you are a vessel, a house, a dwelling place for the Holy Spirit. The Bible says, know you not that your body is, in, uh, that your body is a dwelling place for the Holy Spirit? And it comes again in Romans chapter 12 and said, Present your body a living sacrifice. Because that is where the Holy Spirit will live. Don't conform to this world and the practices of the things they do that result or that translate into spiritual fornication. Be renewed by the word of God so that you will know what is it true will of God and live by them in demonstration, in manifestation of that spirit of God that destroys the works of the devil on earth here. That is what sanctification does for you. When you present that vessel, set apart and a sacred vessel, wherein the Holy Spirit dwells and operates from the Holy Spirit doesn't pray from the sky. He needs a dwelling place, your body, from there, so that when you go to a place with the Holy Spirit, if you're a sanctified Christian, go into a place. The Holy Spirit is on you and in you. And I have thoughts, when you get into such a place, you should declare under your breath, I have come in the name of Jesus. What does that do? You have declared your presence, the presence of the Holy Spirit in that place. Because there is no empty space anywhere. Is that the Spirit of God is there? Or the de demons and the devils are operating there? When the sons of God manifest, their presence clears the atmosphere of those demonic presence. That's why when you come into a place, you are entering a big building or a small building, you say, I have come in the name of Jesus. You have brought confusion in that place in the, because the operating demons and spirits will begin to scatter. They cannot stand the spirit of man, the spirit of Jesus. But we don't do anything, we're just walking because of lack of knowledge. And they'll be messing around. Because if you don't confront them and resist them, they will behave as if they don't know who you are. The Bible says that sin lieth at your doorstep. Sin. Demons that cause sin, the spirit of sin lies there. They know you are around there, but they are lying, looking for a loophole. Looking for a loophole. Ro roaming around you, operating around you, hoping to find a place to come in that you are not watching over, you are not controlling, and they will strike from there. That was why the Bible said, resist the devil and he will flee from you. If you don't resist him, he will remain there. He will be around. He might, not, he might be powerless to do anything because you are there. But he will be around until you make a mistake. They will rush him to take over. And by the time you sort yourself out, you have wasted time, you have wasted energy, you have suffered consequences, you have 
suffered losses that it will take you time to recover from. And when you are being distracted from the, the process of recovery, they are piling up on your problems because you did not take control as the son of God present. That's why all creatures are waiting your manifestation because you will solve their problems. Hallelujah. The God's call to salvation involves those three things, salvation, sanctification, and service. In all this, you have a role to play. Your God has called you. God never does anything with you or with anyone that lives on earth here without consent and agreement. That is why you hear, uh, 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 I disagree with people in their preaching. They will make statements that, statements like, God does not need your permission to do anything. It sounds very good. Oh, our awesome God. He doesn't need our permission to do anything. Yeah. When God wants to do something, he does things according to his will. But when he's doing that thing on earth, he works with people. He seeks their permission, cooperation. He says of um, Abraham, that he will not do anything without telling or consulting with, with his friend Abraham. Isn't that wonderful? In another place, he said God will not do anything without revealing it first to his prophets, to his servants. Why? Well, God does not go back on his word. The calling of God is without repentance. He will not give you something to take it back from you or override you because he's God. No. He has ceded the earth to man to rule over. So anytime he is intervening in, in the things of the earth, he needs man to cooperate with him. Remember what I said, he needs man, not humans. Therefore, in consecration, there are two parts, God's part and your part. Maybe that is where the misunderstanding comes. What do you do to consummate that consecration, that sanctification place? In sanctification, you have a role to play. God has called you to salvation by choosing you, electing you, ordaining you for salvation. And then sanctification comes with your salvation so that you'll be able to be what God or who God can use or cooperate with. Remember God is of a purer eye that he cannot behold sin or iniquity. And uh, he's calling you in relationship with him, in a covenant relationship with him. He will make sure that when you come before him, you have no sin or iniquity because he cannot behold them. That's why your salvation comes with the forgiveness of your sin, sanctification, purification, consecration, setting apart so that you will be acceptable before him. Our God is a holy God and he's a jealous God. Is it therefore possible for you to be sanctified? Yes, because he gave you sanctification the day you were born again. If you are not sanctified as a vessel, the Holy Spirit cannot dwell in you. Let us begin to discuss these things and not make excuses. 
The Holy Spirit is called Holy Spirit. He's not called Holy Spirit for nothing. He does not tolerate sin. He cannot dwell with sin. He cannot live side by side with sin. That's why whenever they go uh, and do deliverance all the time, I, I, I begin to wonder, what are they delivering the people from if they are already Christians? What are they being delivered from? Because your Christianity, your conversion, your salvation has a package that includes deliverance from, 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 from demons, from infections, spiritual infections and all those things. It's a package. You cannot be a Christian and be demon possessed. I'll say that again. You cannot be a Christian and have demon possession issues. I have a spiritual issues in your life that salvation and sanctification did not cover. But I said earlier on, you can be a Christian, but have demon operations around you, but not in you. So from time to time, you need to clean your environment, demon infestation. You clean it because you can. Your presence, they detest. The Bible says, Jesus Christ said in the Bible, I give you power over all unclean spirit. They cannot be in you, but there could be an infestation around. Just like in Africa, we have mosquito infestation. And you bring um, aerosol or whatever they call them and spray around the house and they are dead. You can sleep free that night without mosquito bite. And that improves your chances of not contracting malaria. But if you don't do that, if you're not protected, mosquitoes will bite you and infect you with uh, uh, malaria, um, what do you call it? And when you are infected by this malaria parasite, you develop malaria. But when you take care of the environment, it will never have them because they won't enter you. When the Holy Spirit is in you, the defiling spirit cannot be in you. So what are you being delivered from? Deliverance, I believe, is for those charlatans in the church. I'm not saying it's not relevant because uh, 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 give them all the ones. Just, just, just deliver them from their misery. Even Jesus can heal people who are not, who are not believers. They come and collect that's their portion. Okay, take and go. But that is not the work of the church. When you are doing the ministry of the church, and you come and counter, coming to, you know, you encounter spiritual issues, you take authority and dismiss them. Anyway, praise the Lord. So you have a role to play. Let me just round this up in five minutes. You have a role to play. God has done his own. God has saved you, gave you the gift of salvation, eternal life. With it is the package. In that package is sanctification, the ability, the power, the state of purity to be able to live this saved life. It means you have been, God has set you apart for himself because you, are, you now have a personal covenant relationship with him. You are not like the people in the world. That's why when you see Christian trying to copy people of the world, it, it, it's, 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 it's sickening. 
you should set a standard, not they set a standard for you. To so consecrate yourself in answer to God's gift of sanctification. You see, consecration and sanctification are not the same thing, but they are related. God sanctified you. Amen. God sanctified you, but you in response consecrate yourself to that sanctification, to that call. And that is what was required of us during the COVID lockdown. Personal consecration, coming back to God, re-establishing and refreshing that covenant relationship that you have with him. Being separated, sanctified, consecrated, away from all the distractions that has confused us and become a wedge between us and the coming rapture. The question we ask ourselves, are you closer to God now than before the rapture? Is your strong, is your relationship, covenant relationship with God now stronger than it was before the rapture? If not, you missed it. The whole purpose, the whole opportunity of the of the of the lockdown as a Christian, you missed it. And my counselor will be run back and begin to work on that through consecration so that you attain and be in that sanctified state that God has gifted you the day you were saved. <coughs> to consecrate yourself is to answer God's call to spiritual sanctification. This call comes with your call of God to salvation. That This means you, you making a conscious, willing, decision to dedicate your soul, mind, heart, and body to God. That's your response. Because you already gifted you with those things. This decision must be one of will. You have to decide. You willingly. Intelligence. You have to have an understanding of what you're doing, conscious of what you're doing, consciously consecrating, setting yourself apart, dedicating, giving yourself to Christ, to live according to the demands of your new nature. It has to be affection. You have to be emotionally involved in your decision and your willingness to walk in the new life that God has gifted you. That is what you call consecration. God saved you, enabled you, and empowered you. You say, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you, and I have ordained you, empowered you. What is your response? You receive it with thanksgiving and make up your mind to consecrate yourself to your calling by the action of your will, by the action of your heart, by the action of your body. It's a conscious decision. In other words, it's an emotional thing, demonstration of your agreement and acceptance of the call of God in your life. It is not about dancing, throwing up your hand and dancing and gyrating and sweating and doing all those things and think, yes, we have had a great service today. There's a time for that, a time for celebration. But that is not a Christian life. You don't find that in the book of apostles, the act of apostles. Not even in one place in the act of apostles. 
check the whole New Testament Bible. Praise the Lord. You have to do it with knowledge. That's why it says here you have to do it with your intelligence and consciousness. Amen? Only you can make the decision to consecrate yourself to God if you wish to establish and maintain that personal, permanent, covenant relationship with Jesus. That is so important. He's coming for his own. He's coming for his church. He's coming for those who are set apart for him. Are you one of them? Are you there? What steps have you taken to live for him? Because he died for you. If Jesus truly died for him, for you, you will be living for him. The enabling grace to consecrate your life and walk in sanctification is included in the package of salvation. I think I've said that so many times and I begin to repeat myself and our time is gone. Brethren, the church has called, the, the Lord has called our church to prepare a people for his second coming. And the things that have happened in the last 15 months or more has sensitized us to that call. Is the church of Jesus Christ ready? The question still looms. If I come, will I find faith in the house? Are you part of the cultural and social church that makes so much noise but has no power, have a, a form of godliness, but, the, the, but the deny the power thereof? Or are you the spiritual church, the sons of God, who are called unto salvation and sanctification, who consecrated, who have, who have consecrated their lives to live the life of their calling, to manifest sonship. The time is short. The sons of God are being prepared for rapture, for the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord says, it's expedient for you that I go to the Father, and I will send you the promise of the Father, even the Holy Spirit, to help you in your consecration and maintain the salvation and sanctification that the Father has already bestowed upon you. That is why we do not cease or fail to give thanks to God on your behalf. Because right from the beginning, he chose you. That's what the scripture tells us. What have you done with that choice? Are you living for Christ through consecrated life? Are you sanctified or set apart or separated for him? Not from the confusion in the world, chasing what we don't know. Instead of dedicating consecrated life unto sanctification, to the one that has called us, who has a bigger purpose for our lives. I know the thought I'm thinking to us when he says, it is for peace and not for evil to take you to an expected end. If you don't have that sanctified life, do your work of consecration unto him dedicating your life to him. You will not be at that expected end. And I believe in that expected end, there is no death there. There is no sorrow there. There is no sickness there. It is joy everlasting, pleasures forevermore. 
which is called heaven. He says, I go to prepare a place for you. If it were not so, I would have told you. But it is so. I go to prepare a place. When I'm done preparing the place, I will come and take you with me so that wherever I am, there also will you be. Are you ready to go there? Isn't the suffering in this world enough? I doubt if there's anyone listening to me today who has no pain one, one place or the other, who has no sorrow somewhere, who is not suffering and having regrets, and some people have lost hope completely, but all these things can be reversed today. All you need to do is to answer that call. And receive that enablement to be set aside for God. And when he comes, wherever he is, there also will you be. Do not receive a call and do nothing with it. Like the foolish virgins received a call and they were not ready and they missed their rapture. Shall we pray? Are you still experimenting with sin? Stop. You have the power to say no to sin. You have the power to say no to those defiling things. God has given you the grace and the power and the anointing to live a holy life. For he says, be holy, for I am holy. Be perfect, for I am perfect. If it were not so, he would not have asked you to do it. Examine yourself. Talk to the Lord this morning. Rededicate your life to him. Perchance you have never really given your life to Christ. This is the time to come and say, Lord, here I am. I have sinned. I am a sinner. I repent of all my sins and I confess them to you. Forgive me, save my soul, seal my heart with the Holy Ghost. Have mercy on me. You can do that right now. And the Lord who is full of mercy we hear your prayer because it says, if you pray according to my will, I can hear you. We can have that confidence that I can hear you. And because I've heard you, you have received your petition. Call him, ask him to save your soul. The Bible says that he is faithful and just, that indeed he will forgive you your sins and save your soul. And not only that, he will cleanse you from all unrighteousness, sanctification. He will cleanse you completely. And that will be the beginning of your deliverance because he had delivered you spiritually and then the physical and, and environmental deliverance will kick in, healing promotion, prosperity. We begin to navigate all that by the grace and the presence of the Holy Spirit in your life. You can be born again today. All things would have passed away. All your miseries and sorrows, history of woes would have gone behind you because you're moving forward. And you have moved forward in a new life. All things have become new. If you want to start again, you can start afresh today. Call him into your life. And for you all who have been playing in church, this is the time to dump that stupidity. I'm pretending to be a Christian where you know that in your heart of heart you are not. This is when to surrender all. For the cloud is gathering. The trump will be sound soon. 
those with the Holy Ghost will hear the voice of the archangel. And the Lord will descend from the sky. And those who are his, who have his spirit, the spirit of the Son, will be cut up in the twinkle of an eye with him in the clouds. Hallelujah. I can't wait for that. You can make things right today. Rededicate your life. And he will gladly receive you unto himself. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy One of Israel. Thank you, eternal King of glory. Thank you for this. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please take your communion cup as we proceed very quickly. Prepare your bread. With thanksgiving, break it. Break it with thanksgiving. Hallelujah. As you are doing this, do it with consecration in your heart. Remember what he said. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. With this consecration in your heart, you are doing it in remembrance of him. Take the bread. Break it. Hallelujah. With thanksgiving for your salvation, for your sanctification, and the grace for consecration. Do it in remembrance of him and his words and eat it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are we all there? Can, yeah. can power up your video, please. I want to see everyone. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. After the same manner. After giving thanks, after supper, or eating the bread, the body of Christ, and take up your cup. In the name of the Father, Amen. the name of the Son, Amen. the name of the Holy Ghost, Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. This is part of the consecration process. Come on. Making yourself one with the Lord. You can receive your healing. Touch those lips. Touch those lips. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. And amen. I think before we close, let us just take just one minute. And those close before the announcements, just let us pray for Nigeria. What is going on in Nigeria is frightening. Let us pray against bloodbath that is almost appearing to be inevitable because of satanic actions in Nigeria. To pray for Nigeria and commit Nigeria to God's hand. That you should have mercy on us. So Just for one minute, then. Uh, Clara can take over and, and give the announcement. Just pray for Nigeria. Amen. 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 Amen.
You cast away every blood sucking spirit, oh Jesus. Everything that will cause commotion, everything that will cause war in Nigeria, we resist it. We bind it in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Father Lord, that you bring the spirit of reconciliation. You bring the spirit of reconciliation, oh Father. And Lord, that you you only you, you, you bring back yes. all the splinter yes. groups, oh Jesus. All the dividing groups, oh Jehovah. You bring them back, oh Jesus. Father Lord, that you restore good leadership in Nigeria. Restore God fearing leadership in Nigeria, Lord. God fearing leadership in Nigeria, in the mighty name of Jesus. Have your way, Lord. Let your peace reign, oh Father. Yes, Father. We'll, we'll, yes. You, we'll pray, pray for your peace, oh Lord. We we'll pray for your peace in Nigeria, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, let your wind blow, Father. Let your wind blow, Lord. Let your wind blow in Nigeria. Your wind of peace, oh Father. Let it blow into Nigeria. In the mighty name of Jesus, thank you, Father. We come against every workers of iniquity, so Lord, every evil plan as oh Jehovah, those who are planning to catch into the anarchy, oh Lord, those who are planning to, to, to make fortunes out of, out, of, out of the chaos, oh Father, Father Lord, that you disappoint them, oh Jesus, amen. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Seb. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Before the announcement, can we just pray for our children? I know Pastor's background has the children, and it just took me down memory lane. Coupled with the fact that I watched a clip this morning that really gave my spirit what our children are being taught in schools in this season. Let us pray that none of our children okay. will be blown away by the winds of the world, by the progressive movement, by the lies that are going on. And you will keep them. You will keep them under the shadows of his wing. Our children will not be lost in the name of Jesus. Father, we cover our children in your blood. So Lord, have your way, Father. All the children of this church, yeah, as long as the souls of their feet are passed through this church, those that are still young and those that are youth, so Father, that, that they will not be found wanting them. They will not be thrown away by the winds of the world in the mighty name of Jesus. And I also pray for our parents that will not be in deep sleep while our children are being mentally and spiritually abused in schools, mm -hmm. in the name of Jesus, mm -hmm. Spirit of the living God, that you will wake us up. With the blood of Jesus. You will quicken us in the name of Jesus. For you have appointed us Jesus. as ministers unto your children, as caretakers so unto your children. Father, give us the wisdom, O Lord, on how to raise them in the fear of you, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Amen. Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. 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 Here are the announcements for the week. We have our Bible studies every Tuesdays, and that takes place uh, uh, on our Zoom meeting platform. It starts at 7 p.m. and ends at 8 p.m. And every mm. Thursdays, we have our prayer altar where the kneeling warriors go before God in intercession. It starts at 8 p.m. and ends at 9 p.m. Every first Friday of the month, we have our monthly night vigil. That starts at 10 p.m. and ends at 1 a.m. Every first Sunday of the month is our communion, healing, and thanksgiving service. We do take communion that day. That's our designated day of communion, but we are taking communion every Sunday in this season. And all this are done via our Zoom meeting platform. All you need to do is download the Zoom app 
And the meeting ID is 740-697-0598. The passcode is 462461. If your service provider allows and do not charge you extra, the New York number is 929-205-6099. It will inquire you to, require you to put in the meeting ID and the passcode. As I say, when you log in, use your earpiece to reduce any form of discussion so that your fellow brethren can hear clearly. And you can share this on to your friends, or if they don't want to download the app, they can watch us live streaming on Facebook. All they have to do is follow us on Facebook, Day Spring Church New York, and they can watch us live on Sundays and on Tuesdays during our Bible studies. May the Lord bless us as we gather in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 This concludes the announcements for the week. Amen. So we share the grace. <clears throat> May the grace of our, our Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, Christ the, the love, love of God, God and, and the communion of the Holy, Holy Ghost, Ghost be with us now and, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. For surely His goodness and mercy shall follow me. All the days of my life, and I will dwell in the presence of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Ever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Enter into the way with a mentality of victory. Amen. Bless your possessions in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The mercy will follow you. Amen. Amen. Walk through this week empowered. Amen. Amen. Thank you and quickened by the Holy Ghost. Amen. 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 Well with you and it shall be well with you. Amen. Amen. Have a wonderful week in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Have a wonderful Have week, a wonderful everyone. Bye, everybody. God bless Bye, you all. Have a blessed week. Bye, everybody. Bye. Be covered by the blood of Jesus. Bye, Bye everyone. Bye, Bye, everyone. Bye. 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 and Chinas, Bye. I hope you saw the video. <laughs> they were covering their eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Even when they get to twenties uh -huh. and school, they will be yeah. saying, <laughs> very, right. nice. very nice. Bye, Take everyone. Care, everybody. Bye, everyone. Hey, sister Marcia. Hi, sister girl. Bye, Hi, sister Del. We also sister sister to you. Sister Ku. Marcia. Bye, Bye. 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 Bra Charles, have a wonderful week. Okay, I hear okay. you. <laughs> take care. Yeah, you too. Yeah. Okay, take care, everybody. Yeah.